Hi, I'm Jeff Allers, and I'm here to present uh, the new version of New Amsterdam, at least in prototype form. Uh, this was just a little game that I did uh, back in 2012, I think is when it finally came out. Got pretty good reviews back then, and so I, I was working on an expansion for it, and so I've gotten a lot of input over the years, and every time I do, then I kind of go back to it and tweak a few things with it, knowing that uh, someday it might get republished like a lot of my other games, uh, my older, older games have done. So, uh, and sure enough, I found some fans of the game who uh, started a publishing company and are going to publish a new version of it uh, sometime soon. So I've been working on it again, um, pretty intensely and uh, developed a lot of new things. I've also taken the time to streamline some things as well. And then the other thing is we're working on a solo version. So I've played the solo version many times. That's easy to play test. Let's take a look at it. So this is the prototype made from the original game artwork from 2012. And it's set up for three players. Uh, the core of the game the auction mechanic. I'm not going to explain all the mechanics from the original game. I'm just going to go through the changes. So if you notice, the only change right now in the cash box here is that instead of a reward of just coins for some of the some of the slots here that you can bid on, uh, you've got different resources uh, that you can get if you bid on that slot. So uh, if you decide to, if you uh, gain this slot here with a turn order token, uh, you, you get all these action markers, plus you would get an extra corn. The starting setup for each player is very similar to the other one. Um, instead, a uh, slight difference though is you get five corn instead of only three, and you only get six money then. Uh, so it's a little bit different, a little more corn to work with, so you don't get stuck in a hole at the very beginning trying to feed your buildings uh, in the city. And uh, as you can see, you still have the... Um, the wharf card here where you can put your goods and the dock there and I just went ahead and instead of having to use one of your wooden buildings there's one pictured already on there and uh, and this time you have a starting land card as well it doesn't produce any corn from round to round but it does give you some pasture to put your livestock on uh, and uh, you get one starting livestock and also it also has three buildings already pictured on it and that's important because now you have to store your corn from round to round otherwise it'll go bad so uh, so you can only store one corn per build per building on your land uh, so that means uh, if I were at the end of the round and I still only have this one card and I didn't use these two corns at all, which I, I will probably to feed my two buildings, starting buildings in the city, but if I didn't use them, I would lose them because I can only store these three corn in these three starting buildings. As soon as I have more land though, then of course I can store more corn in the buildings that are on there. The land doesn't have to be cleared, I just have to have buildings on uh, in order to use that. And of course, I still have my three starting wood, which you don't you don't have any restrictions on that. You can have as much of that from round to round as you want, and the same with the money. So now I'll talk about a little bit about the three different action areas of the game: the city, the land, and the trading actions. And those have changed just slightly. Um, the biggest change probably is in the city. Uh, the city, you know, before there were special actions in each city district, and you also, uh, you were trying in order to do those actions, if you didn't have the most in that district, then you had to pay money, um, and uh, it, was, it was a little bit fiddly, and I, I didn't like that. And so instead, um, all those city actions are now just simply on an overview card, and these are all the different things that you can do as those special actions. So you remember special actions are something you can do every turn whether you have a, tur a token for, a, for an action in that phase or not. And so uh, the special actions that you can do now are all here. So you don't, it doesn't have anything, any connection to the city anymore. Uh, you can either just take two coins if you don't want to do any of the other actions. Um, or you can build one to three houses on land as usual. Um, you can... Uh, the black market, you can do this only one time, and that's trade three goods for one fur uh, drawn out of the bag. Uh, so that's something that's limited now to just one. If your trading post isn't near the Lenape Indian longhouses, then you have to pay extra food in order to get there, just as you would when you're normally trading with them. 
Um, up here, you can also trade two to one any resource for almost every other resource. The only thing that you can't trade for is livestock that you can use to trade for one of these resources, but it's a little bit harder to get, so you can't trade for it there. So one resource for another at a two to one ratio, that's another special action. Another special action you can take, uh, which is from before, is to build one warehouse on your wharf. Uh, and another one is to build one trading post, which is makes basically moving your trading post up the river so that you can get closer to the uh, longhouses. And uh, finally, these two bottom actions are something that's new. You've got these new roll cards, different historic figures that can help you out. And those each card will allow you to do something special that you normally wouldn't get to do. So you can take that as a special action to help you out. And, uh, and I'll go into that a little bit later. And then the finally is to help build Fort Amsterdam. So basically you're just giving up a group, different types of resources in order to get a card that's gonna score you money because you've contributed to the fort for that round. Um, and I'll show those cards in a minute. So those are the two new options that really help give players who have kind of fallen behind maybe into the other things, it gives them an option, especially in the five player game to catch up. So in the city, you still have special things in each area, in each district. So you're still kind of having this majority battle, but you're not having to pay extra money anymore to in order to take the actions there. Instead, you don't have actions here, but you have just a bonus. So if you have the most uh, houses in this district, when you score an election, in addition to scoring three points, you also get a bonus of two coins. Um, over here, that player if they have the most would have two bonus goods and so forth and then up here you get a fur drawn out of the bag over here you get a livestock um, the dice symbols are for the solo game your two actions in the city are to either build one to three houses uh, using one wood for each house or now you can also opt instead of using wood to build houses you can actually just move a house from one district to another and that doesn't cost any wood so you can do these two actions in any combination one to three times. So I could build one house and move two houses and it only cost me one wood or I can build two houses and move one house or three of one or three of the other. So even if I don't have any wood I could still at least move my houses around maybe to to give myself a little bit more of an advantage in one or two districts. Uh, so that's changed slightly and and then this is still, still the same is that uh, then you hold an election to score points you get points three points for every district where you have the most more than anybody else and where you're tied for the most you get two points so now we come to the land phase the second phase and that one um, just like before it's pretty much the same as before is that you either take a card a land card and then you have to move the Lenape longhouses further up the Hudson River because they're having to move as you take their land and then also uh, you uh, the other option is uh, to clear the land card um, so at first you put a wood on it to show that it's still a wooded area and as soon as you build houses on it and you get this action token again you can clear the land card and um, then you get a one-time uh, bonus of all the wood that you cleared and then you've cleared the land, you get uh, income in corn, and you also have some pasture for grazing up to two livestock on there. Uh, you also get a number of points, and that's been altered a little bit. Uh, so now there's a little bit more points there up front. Uh, so the first land card that you clear, you get four points. If it's the second land card that you've cleared, you just get eight points, and the next one is 12, and then 14, and then 16, and then every other one after that is 18. So that's a little bit more balanced with some of the other areas of the, of the game. In addition to the corn that I would get for income on my cleared land, uh, I'm also going to get livestock. If I have, for every, every two livestock that I have on my land, and I, like I said, you can have up to two on each land card, including your starting card, I would get a baby livestock which I can then put on land if I had another land card, or if I don't, I can always butcher it and use it for food to feed the city, just like I would normally do with my corn. I can use livestock instead of corn to feed the city. So you can kind of build a little, a little livestock engine as well then by collecting livestock. The third area of the game is the trading part. And uh, there's only a few slight modifications with that. Uh, the first 
action that you can do is to trade with the Lenape Indians on the Hudson River. And uh, just as before, you start out with your trading posts in line with the Lenape village. And as soon as you start taking land cards, they start moving so that pretty soon you're not there anymore. And so if you want to continue trading with them, uh, you can either keep your trading post here, but then you have to now pay one corn and one livestock in order to uh, trade with them. Uh, or you can move, move one of your um, trading posts by, um, by paying wood to get there, and then you can trade with them without having to pay. So once you're there, of course, then you can trade like normal. You can trade with one of these three uh, Lenape traders and uh, for the furs that they have uh, using your goods. Uh, one little bonus, though, is that if you're the furthest ahead um, along the Hudson, your trading post has been moved the farthest, then you can actually uh, draw an extra fur from the bag. Uh, so you get a slight bonus there whenever you trade and you're the farthest ahead. Uh, so that means if somebody else moves and builds in the same area, they put theirs kind of behind yours so they know who was there first. And the ship cards have been slightly modified so that uh, here you see uh, with this ship you get a one-time reward of a livestock. Uh, this ship uh, has livestock income every round. Now one of the new added features is for players to help build Fort Amsterdam, which was always on the board here, but never really utilized. And so now we have actually different stages here of the uh, Fort Amsterdam that will be built. So over the course of the game and every round there's going to be two different players to build to contribute to building Fort Amsterdam using some of their resources. So you say here there's two options. One is one wooden, one fur. And if someone gave up one wooden, one fur for their special action, they could build this card for Fort Amsterdam and it's worth three points, which doesn't seem like a whole lot, but it does add up because, um, and once somebody builds one of these, they can't build the other one, only one per player each, each round. So in round two, if you also built part of Fort Amsterdam, this one, uh, it's going to be gradually more expensive. As people get their engines going and can produce more resources, there's going to be more resources required to build the fort. But the rewards are also greater. Here, this one is worth three plus one extra point for every card you have of Fort Amsterdam, including this one. So if you built this one, it's going to be worth four points. If you built one last round in addition to that, then this will be worth five points, which you score immediately. Uh, so you can see you can come up with quite a few points with that. If you build all six levels, you're going you're gonna to score probably more than 40 points. So um, that's a nice alternative if you get locked out of something else during the game. You can make up the points here. The other new addition to the game are the roll cards. These are famous people from that time. And each roll card, there are going to be four roll cards every round. And then uh, for your special action, you could choose to do one of these. And they basically allow you to do some, something better than the normal special action. Uh, so for instance, here you can trade one good for two corn. Here you can trade one livestock for two of any of these other ones. Here you can trade one of your furs with one of the Lenape traders and, and get a better a, one that fits better um, to give you more points. Uh, for a ship order. And here you can substitute one any one good for any other good that's needed to, to build the fort. So here you can build the fort uh, using this card and if you didn't have one of the resources or didn't have one, enough of them you could substitute one other resource for that. Uh, the catch here with these cards though too is that actually they're better for people who are later in the turn order. Uh, so again, a kind of a subtle catch-up mechanism. So you can actually perform the action on the card as many times as your turn order marker. Uh, so if you're first in turn order, you can only do the card once. Uh, so I can only substitute one thing uh, to build the fort. But if I'm the last place player, if I'm the fifth in the turn order, I could do this five times. So I could actually substitute uh, five different goods or five of the same goods for uh, five different ones that were required if I had a lot of one thing. Um, and uh, the same thing here, instead of just trading one good for two corn, I could trade up to five goods for ten corn. So, uh, so going last in the turn order is really good for these cards, but of course um, you'll have last pick of them every round. 
And for this reason, um, when I'm playing with three players, I'm actually playing with the one, the three, and the five turn order markers, marker, so that there's a bigger difference when it comes to using those roll cards. So now I'm going to talk about the solo game. The solo game, um, I have the same setup as in the actual game, and I forgot to actually, uh, when I was demonstrating the, the base game, the multiplayer game, I was forgot to actually draw my furs, because you start with two furs as well, drawn randomly from the bag. And, um, and that's all the dummy player really has. The dummy player just has their houses, and they have two furs to start out with. Otherwise, everything is pretty much the same, except there's going to be a reduction in cards. You're only going to use two land cards and two ship cards um, at each round. And you notice I have this little extra thing here that shows dice here to roll, uh, determining what the dummy player will take if they happen to take land or ship cards. And um, I've also got only one Fort Amsterdam card every round. And if I don't complete that Fort Amsterdam card, the my opponent, uh, the dummy player, will actually get that card automatically. So if I, it's going to be this card is going to be a six point swing then, because if I don't get the three points, he's going to get the three points, and then uh, so I'm actually behind by six then. So that's a important kind of pressure to try to complete as many Fort Amsterdam cards as possible. Um, and as we see here, there's dice markings here, here, and here, as well as we noticed that before in the city districts and, and then for the different cards. And those, uh, so you need a six-sided dice then to play against the dummy player. So for example, too, for the starting buildings in the city, I've, I've placed mine. And after I place mine, I roll the die twice. And then I place my opponent's buildings in those districts to start out. Then here, uh, for the cash box, for the bidding round, I'm only going to use the number one and the number two turn order tokens. Uh, so I'll only be able to use the, the roll cards once or twice during the game. Uh, also, uh, when I'm bidding then, I basically decide, I get to decide first every time which thing I want. And if I take one of the the three token lots here, then I'm automatically going to get the two turn order token. In other words, I'm going to go last in the round every round if I take one of these. If I take one of the two token lots, uh, then I'm going to get to go first. So I'll be able to take the one here and go first every round. Either way, whatever I take, the dummy player is going to get um, one of the three action lots uh, that are left over. So if I take one of these, then I take the two, and then the dummy player will get the other one, and they'll get the, the one and get to start every round. Um, if, however, I take one of these other lots that are only two, suppose I want the two land tokens, and of course then I would also get the cow, the, cow, the livestock token, then I would get the number one turn order token, so I would get to go first. And then, um, I'd have to determine again which one of these lots uh, the dummy player takes. So on a one to three roll, this first lot, on a four to six roll, the second lot. So I would say, oh, one to three, so it's going to take this lot here. And then they would go second in the turn order. So you play the game pretty much the same way you would normally play the game against other players. Uh, but the dummy player uh, plays according to a few specific rules. For instance, in the city, uh, when you have a city action token, then you the, they would um, put that down and they would look and if they can score at least 10 points and if they would score more than you in an election, uh, then they score, just as you would. If they can't, however, which is at the beginning here, uh, they only have two houses. They have the majorities in those two places, so that means it would get six points, three and three. So that's not ten points yet. So instead then, they're going to build three houses automatically. They don't have to pay wood. They don't have anything to do with resources. They just build them. So that's uh, on a five. And when you're placed, when they're building houses, uh, you place them according to uh, where the, the, the die roll is, but if I would have rolled a four, I already have the majority there, or he already has the majority there, and so in that case, then um, 
it would move on to the next possible district. So actually rolling a four would be the same as rolling a five in this instance. And if I roll a six, then it's gonna go back to the one because the six is already controlled by yellow. So let's see where I roll my other two. So three, so three is not controlled by yellow yet. And four is the last one. Okay, here we go. So four is controlled by yellow, five is controlled by yellow, six is controlled by yellow, so it'll go back to one, and that's not controlled by yellow yet. So, so that's one city action. Now, if that particular player had a second city action, you'd reevaluate. Now, yellow definitely has more, uh, more points than red, than me, and Yellow would score three, six, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 points. So that's more than nine points. So that means this time yellow would not build, but they would score. So I put that down and yellow scores 13 points here. So when the dummy player has a land action, first you look and see, does yellow have a land card yet? No, they don't. So if they don't have a land card, they take a land card. And again, which card? Determined by the dice. So two, so they would take this card and put it there. So the next time the dummy player has a land action, they look, oh, we have a land card. So instead of taking land, we simply build a house on land. It doesn't matter how many houses, just build a house on land. And now this land is finished. It's cleared, it's everything, so it's scored right away. So you can go back here, the first land card, four points, and so they would get four more points. The trade actions are the same way. If they have a trade action, they look. First, they look at the ships. So you've got one ship requiring two furs, one ship requiring three furs. So you look, do we have two furs at least? Yes, we do. So then go ahead for the, land, for the trade action as you trade the furs for that ship. And um, if they were both two, then you would roll the dice again to see which one you would take. Also, if, um, if the dummy player had three furs, then it automatically take the more valuable ship because they'd be able to use three of their furs. So you take this ship and two different furs is worth three plus two is five points. So you would move the scoring marker five more down. If, however, I have a trade action, but I do not have any furs anymore, uh, then I need furs. So then the first thing I do is for the dummy player, the dummy player moves their house one space or to the next free space if they can. So if, however, we have this situation where I was able to beat the dummy player to it. Now the dummy player cannot do that because they can't skip over to a space where there are no long houses. So as soon as there are, however, if we had something like this situation and then the dummy player can skip over and go to the next, I guess we're using the black spaces for the two player. So, um, so they could go to the next one. And if that's the case, then you go here, and again, we roll the dice to see which furs they're going to take, because the dummy player doesn't have goods. They don't need to worry about goods, they just trade. So the three would mean that the dummy player would take these three furs. And you notice also that the dummy player is ahead of me now on the Hudson River with their trading post, so they would draw an additional fur from the bag randomly. So they actually do get four furs after all. So then these can be used, of course, to fulfill another ship order in the future. So it's been a lot of fun to continue to work on this game over uh, the last several years, uh, especially after finding a new publishing partner. I'm excited about all the changes. Hopefully it'll be uh, fun for uh, fans of the original game, but also uh, new gamers who ha never discovered the original one. And uh, I hope you're excited, as excited about it as I am. Thanks for watching.